Hey everybody, welcome back to Damien After Dark. You know the deal, if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe and like this video below so you can get all my videos straight to your phone. Sorry that um, I haven't gotten this review up yet. I'm a little bit late with the Love and Marriage review. Been working a lot lately, but finally getting it done. And then the Love and, or the Real Housewives of Potomac um, review will be up shortly as well for those that are looking for that. So, this is Love and Marriage episode 7 from season 3 called WAP. Wanda ain't playing. We get a lot of Miss Wanda this episode, which I know a lot of people don't like that. I personally love that. I feel like every show needs a good pot stir and Miss Wanda gives us just that. So we pick up from last week's episode. They're having an event. The whole cast is at this event. It's at Black Cigar Lounge which is owned by Marceau and Letitia. I couldn't recall what the event was. They didn't mention it again, so I can't remember exactly what they were there for. It may have been the, the opening or the soft opening or the chocolate in a bottle launch, something like that. Um, the men are outside and they ask Martel if he loves Ariane. And of course, in true Martel fashion, he kind of pivots and dodges the question. Um, and another person asks if he got a DNA test with Ariane and the baby as well. And he never answered that as well, which pretty much means he didn't. Because if you remember on the show, uh, he asked Ariane in the car about a DNA test and she was like, now Martel, you know that baby is your child. I think for Martel's ego, he wanted to say, oh, a DNA test, a DNA test to give everybody that little ounce of hope that that baby's not his. But at the end of the day, Martel didn't get no DNA test because he knows that the baby is his. Let's just let's just call it call it what it is. Um one of the boys asked if Martel asked him if it's hot boy summer and he says it's always hot boy summer. Okay Martel, I see you. Back inside, Melody brings up that Wanda is following Ariane, which is the mistress to Martel and Melody's marriage. And Wanda was, you know, trying to have a conversation with Melody, talk with her and whatnot. And Melody brings this up to her. She's like, look, you you always trying to encourage me and Martel to get back together, but you're on Ariane's page commenting and liking and calling her beautiful. And while I do love Miss Wanda, I do have to kind of agree with that. Like, if someone is trying to talk to me or get to know me or be my friend, but you are commenting and liking and talking about someone who tried to do a lot of hurt in my life, you know, I kind of have a problem with that. So I can kind of see where Melody was coming from a little bit with that. But that whole debacle turns into Wanda versus Melody. Destiny, because Destiny's in the middle of this conversation, and she turns to Wanda and kind of starts to stick up for Melody a little bit, and, you know, Destiny's like, what happened hurt her, she don't want to be with him anymore, all this and all that, and at some point, Wanda calls Destiny insecure, she's like, you're a little bit insecure, you're a little bit insecure, and Destiny gets up, and she gives us a moment, okay, this is what I wanted to see out of Destiny, because that's a lot like me. She's a little, she's cool. She's reserved. She's collected. But you say the wrong thing or you push the wrong button, she's coming for you. And Destiny got, she's got up out of her chair. I remember seeing her spin a few times. She flipped that hair around, told Miss Wanda how it was. And I was like, ooh, ooh, okay, Destiny. Okay, secure that season four check. I see you, Destiny. Um, So... She says that it was wrong for Miss Wanda to be interacting with, quote unquote, the mistress. And I mean, while Wanda is grown and she can do what she wants, she got us, she got it, got us talking. She got a storyline going. I mean, she's doing her job, at least. If this was real life and there wasn't a love and marriage Huntsville, I don't think Wanda would have ever probably commented on that photo, you know, or maybe it was just at the time that Melody and Tisha were into it. So Miss Wanda was at home feeling petty and she looked up the mistress and commented on the photo. So, oh, it was low self-esteem. It wasn't insecure. Wanda said that Destiny has low self-esteem. That's what it was. We get a new confessional look from 
uh, Miss Wanda on this episode, and she is stunning. I mean, the best I've ever seen her. She always looks good, but in this episode, she was glowing. I love the new confessional look on Miss Wanda. She, I think, Miss Wanda had a lot of us dying this episode because she said one thing that like had me in the floor, which was at the end of the day, Melody and Ariana might as well be sister wives at this point. And I'm like, OMG. Like, if you think about it, they kind of were for five years. They kind of were like sister wives, except it wasn't a consensual thing amongst them. Even though they knew about each other, they still continued to go back to Martell, both of the girls. Wanda um, asked Melody if her and Arion were friends, and that really set Melody off. I don't understand why that question in particular did. I think Melody probably still, somewhere deep inside, has some hurt and anger for what has happened because their relationship and divorce is still kind of fresh. They haven't been divorced in maybe even a year, I don't think. So I'm sure there is still some kind of hurt and I think that's maybe why she popped off. Like, really, you asking if I'm friends with that girl? Are you serious? Um, sometimes I think Melody would be happier if she just moved. I know that she's got the kids and she can't just up and move them to a totally different city, but um, I think with Huntsville being so small, I think it would be easier if she would just move and she could be away from Martell, she could be away from the Arian drama and she can just focus on herself and her children and her career. Melody as well has a new confessional look. All the ladies this episode get new confessional looks and tens across the board, head to toe for all the ladies who ever did each of their looks. It's getting better and better every episode, every season. Um, which is great to see. A lot of people rag on Huntsville. They're like, oh, their, their style and fashions are, are, are ugly and they can't do hair and makeup, but they have stepped up this season and I think they look phenomenal. Melody storms out after Wanda asks that question, after she goes off. Destiny goes behind her and back inside, Miss Wanda keeps it going and now she's got a bone to pick with Kimmy, and she pretty much tells Kimmy, all y'all sit around here and let Melody talk. You don't say nothing, and you run up behind her. And Kimmy's like, I ain't running up behind nobody. And for once in the first in the in the past three seasons since Love and Marriage has started, we really see Kimmy get upset. We know Kimmy can get upset. I know Kimmy can get upset. I've seen it happen on camera and off camera. But this scene in particular. Kimmy really, really was pissed at Wanda, and she wanted Wanda to give her an example. What have I done to you and to Tisha for you to warrant or for to warrant you coming at me like this? And Miss Wanda just kept saying, I ain't gotta say nothing that you've done. I ain't gotta say nothing. And then Kimmy keeps saying, just say it. Just say it. Say it, Wanda. Just fucking say it. I mean, I think Kimmy said that a total of 562 times that episode, and Wanda never said it. <laughs> Give me a saying, tell me what I said. Tell me what I said, Wanda. Say it. Tell me what you see. Oh, it's tell me what you see. I have it in my notes in big lettering. Tell me what you see, Wanda. And she even hit the table at one point. Tell me what the fuck you see. And Wanda... Wanda never gave her an explanation, but I thought it was funny when Wanda walked out. She was laughing like it's, it was funny for her. Um, Let's see here. We get to see Melody in the recording studio. She's talking about her music. Destiny shows up. They kind of, you know, um, rehash some things that happened in the past as far as Destiny and Melody's altercation. And Melody tells Destiny that she can be very aggressive sometimes, which you could tell rub Destiny the wrong way a little bit. But I really think everybody in this group can be aggressive. I mean, we're all human. Can't we all be at some point, depending on our tone and our mannerisms and our demeanor when we're talking to somebody and having a conversation? It can come off aggressive, especially if you don't like what the other person has to say. Um, but Mel also tells Destiny, she talks to her about the issues about her and Wanda, the fight that went on at Black, 
and she says that she hopes that this doesn't hurt her and Tisha's relationship because Melody and Tisha are mending their friendship and they're getting back to where they used to be. But she's afraid that Wanda's drama is going to um, come in between that. Now, we'll get more into that in a little bit in the video of whether or not it will because Tisha has been speaking up for some of these issues against what her mother is doing. So we'll get into that in a second. Um, they both bring up, Mel and Destiny bring up Tiffany and her spilling all this tea in the group. Destiny says maybe it's that Tiffany just can't read a room or something, but I'm like, no, Tiffany knows what's going on. She knows what's going on. She knows what the game's about. She came in to be messy and have a moment, and that's okay. We love mess. We love moments, but don't play victim. Own it and say, you know what? I came in there. I should have done that, but it is what it is, and if every time it gets brought up, you got to handle that, and you've got to be able to combat that, so... um. Anyway, Melody and Destiny, they come back together as always, even though Destiny didn't like the fact that Melody said that she was a little bit aggressive. Um, Melody and Destiny, like I said in the video before, they never tend to go too far to where the friendship breaks up. It's never gotten to where Tisha and Melody once were. So I don't see their friendship breaking up anytime soon. It always seems like they come back as one. Um, we go to the next scene, which is Lewis and Tiffany, the new couple, and they're out in the yard doing um, yard work, and I thought it was kind of odd because they just kind of stop and start having a conversation about what happened at Black in the middle of doing yard work. Um, I just feel like, I don't know. Maybe the scene should have been in... They probably, they've already had a scene with them in the house. Maybe we should get a scene with... Um, Lewis and Tiffany out to dinner or something. Something different. Maybe that's coming up in the future. I don't know. And um, she, Tiffany tells Lewis that she felt blindsided by the fact that Maurice and Kimmy brought up the conversation at Black. And she just felt like they kept beating this conversation and bringing it up. And she was tired of hearing it from different people. But Tiffany, at what point, like I just said a moment ago, you got to take some accountability for that shit that you slung when you came in that room. I'm not going to go to someone's birthday brunch and just start dropping little bombs of information that I know to people. However, this is why Tiffany gets a pass for me because I've worked on the inside and I know that this is a job and I know that, look, she can't be the girl who shows up at the party and enjoys the drinks and you don't say anything. That doesn't make good TV. T uh, Tiffany had to show up and sling a little bit of mess. So I'm giving her grace here. But now I just wish she would have what come after that. I wish she would have handled it differently. When the people come to you about it, don't cry. Don't play the victim. Don't do that. Own the shit, okay? That's what I want from you, Tiffany. Tiffany says one thing that I thought was very interesting. She said that at the whole party at Black, Mel said to her in the bathroom, because if you remember, Tiffany went in the bathroom and started crying. Mel said in the bathroom that Kimmy, she told this to Tiffany, that Kimmy and Maurice and them don't communicate as, as couples. Well, they never, Tiffany never said Kimmy and Maurice but she said to her husband, Mel told me in the bathroom that they don't all communicate as a couple. So I was like, ooh, child, you just opened up a can of worms. Because I have a feeling when the Scots see this, they're not going to like the fact that Melody was telling Tiffany that. And I don't know if they aired that on the last episode when Tiffany was in the bathroom crying, Mel saying that to her. If y'all saw that, let me know in the comments. I'm not sure or if this was just new information that Tiffany's giving us that could possibly spill into the rest of the season. Um, so Tiffany says that they just keep talking about it again and again and again. But I'm like, you started it, Tiff. Like, again, you started it. She said in, in her confessional, she said again, and I noticed this, 
that they don't they don't communicate enough at home as a couple and i'm like girl you did it again you dropped the worm the can of worms that melody told you then you're confessional you said they obviously don't communicate at home as a couple how do you know what goes on at home with them as a couple you see a snippet on a tv show you don't know and that to me tells me that tiffany wants that smoke because she's putting up a big front and these confessionals and stuff and i really don't think she realizes the repercussions that's going to come behind that because let there be a reunion and they're going to go at it if not we'll see it spill over into season four i mean tiffany they coming for you girl we haven't seen too much of martell lately he seems to be missing in action he must have be on daddy duty or something with his kid his five children but we see him meet up with a business partner and this scene kind of shocked me a little bit because Martell goes to meet up with a friend and a business partner and he and the friend start talking and he tells the friend that he wants to start building on the 47 acres and he wants to start building on it quick before uh, Chris and Melody get in on the 47 acres. Now, if you remember, Chris, which is a friend of the show, come to Melody and said, look, I want you to... to go in with me and build on this 47 acres. Melody told Chris, you need to talk to Martell about that first because I don't want me and him to have any more issues than we already do. Chris goes to Martell and lets him know, look, I went to Melody about this deal first. Now I'm coming to you about this whole 47 acres deal. And it rubbed Martell the wrong way. I can kind of understand why in a way. And then <clears throat> Martell is now deciding he wants to hurry and build on this 47 acres. He wants to put 44 lots and he wants to do it before Melody and Chris get to doing that. Now here's the kicker. Martell has been in this whole home building industry for a while now and he doesn't even have his home builder's license. And he tells his business partner, he doesn't have his home builder's license. What the hell, Martell? Now, he says that he failed the test when he went to take it years ago, but Melody passed it and he trusted his wife. So why not just let her have the home builder's license and he um, didn't worry about it. So Melody was the brains of the operation, what it seems like, and Martell was more of the bronze and the look of the, the company and whatnot. Um, I'm thinking Martell... Oh, Martell, oh, Martell, Martell, Martell. Um, he said he's going to go right away and get the home builder's license. Let's hope he does. I mean, shit, what are you doing, Martell? Like, I just want to ring him sometime and be like, wake up. Because I know deep inside he's a good dude, despite some of the things that he says and does. So I was just like, why did you never go back and get that? I understand his having a wife and thinking that, but I guess you never expect your marriage to, to end. Um, the business partner told Martel, by the way, to make sure he has it. Like the business partner was actually a little stunned that he didn't have it. He was like, I thought you had the license all along. And I'm not gonna lie, anybody that's trying to do business with Martel and he tell them that it's probably gonna look suspicious. I'm not in that industry, but hey, I'm just saying, it's almost like you are you want an attorney to work on a case for you, and the attorney says, well, I don't have my, my license, or whatever it's called that the attorneys get. So, Miss Wanda comes over to Tisha Marceau's house, and they all talk about what went on at Black. So much went on at Black, so everybody's talking about it. And Wanda tells... Tisha about the exchange that her and Melody had and how Melody was upset about her commenting under the picture that of Arion. And this is another example of for once we see Tisha really stand up to her mom, really hold her mom accountable for some of the things that she's that she's doing. And she tells Miss Wanda, look, it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful for you to be doing things like that and getting in their business. And I can, I can agree with that. And I'm glad that Tisha is doing that and telling her mom that because people always wanted to punk Tisha down and make her seem out like that she was just this punk of a girl. And I, I know differently. I know that Tisha's not like that. And I'm so glad that we're seeing a different layer to her. She doesn't have to scream. She doesn't have to get loud. She don't have to be messy. 
um, but she can get her point across to be confident and stern in her delivery. Wanda said that um, <laughs> Wanda starts telling Tisha about uh, Kimmy, sorry y'all, about the whole ordeal with Kimmy. <laughs> And she said, I mean, at one point, she said, she's going to lose people acting that way. And she's going to lose her front teeth talking to me. And I'm like, ooh, Wanda chose violence today. Like, she was mad when she was talking about that. Tisha tells Wanda that she doesn't need to stand up for her. No more regarding anything. She's a grown adult. And I get, as a parent, you always wanting to stand up for your child. But I am think. I think Tisha's got it. And I understand because I couldn't imagine my mom getting in all my business. I mean, it's super entertaining for us at home watching. And I love to watch Miss Wanda's antics. But I think like if it were my mom, I'd be like, oh, my God, mom, please sit down. You're embarrassing me. Marceau comes outside and Wanda, you know, she's been going in and going in since she's been here at their house. Talking about Melody, talking about Kimmy. As soon as Marceau comes out, she points that gun at him and she starts letting him have it. And Wanda is upset because if you remember, Marceau gifted Melody a bottle of chocolate in a bottle, which is their, their line of champagne. It's a, it's a chocolate champagne. He gifted it to Melody and it upset Wanda. And Wanda was like, why in the hell did you give Melody a bottle of, of champagne, but you didn't give anybody else? And in Marceau's defense, he said that he gave it to her because he wanted her to be a brand ambassador. And if he, if it would have been anybody else on the cast, let's say he had done Kimmy, like gave Kimmy some, I might would have looked at him like, hmm. But Melody has the most followers out of this entire show. Melody is the mo the one that's most known from Love and Marriage Huntsville. Let's just keep it real. I love the cast equally, but Melody is kind of like that. She's kind of like the Nene of the group from Atlanta Housewives. She's like the 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 core of the group, and um, she's got the most followers, and she's doing the most as far as public speaking, events, engagements things of that nature. So of course you would want her to pr promote and talk about your product because you're going to get a lot of buzz from it. So I didn't take it necessarily as him being flirty, but then again, I don't know. I mean, I just, I don't know. Um, Tisha herself wanted to know as well why he did that when Wanda brought it up. And I was kind of like, oh no, Tisha, don't, because it kind of made her look like, I don't want to say insecure, but it made her look like she didn't Trust Marceau, because one thing I've learned in relationships is if you truly trust somebody, no matter what, you're not going to question anything. Your man could see a girl at the store, say, hey, how are you? Open the door for her, have a conversation with her. You see it from the window and you know, I'm not worried about that because I trust my man. You really trust. You don't really worry about those little things. So I was just like, Tisha, no, you've got to trust your husband. This is, and Marceau said something in the confessional. And I was like, oh no. He said, which is true, but I was wondering, this is, he said, if you don't have trust, what, what was his exact words? Let's see. I don't know where it said. Anyway, he said, if pretty much, if you don't have trust, the relationship starting is going to start to end. And I thought he was saying it in the tense relating to his own marriage, but I think he was just saying in general. And I really don't want to see anything ever happen to him and Tisha, so I hope they can learn to communicate effectively and keep going to Dr. Francis and, you know, continue to grow as a couple because I do love them as a family. So Marceau, there it is. Marceau says, if you don't have trust in the relationship, then that relationship has expired. That's what he said in the confessional where I was like. <laughs> Wanda asked him if he really has a baby out there. And Marceau says, yeah, I do. You're going to be a side grandma. And Wanda said, no, your mama going to be a side grandma. And there was a rumor during the season while it was filming that Marceau had a baby out there, but I don't believe it because if you look where the rumor came from, it was some person on Instagram or Twitter who I don't even think had a profile picture. 
and they were just saying this out of nowhere. And the blogs ran with it, people ran with it and said it was true. If Marceau had a baby out here, I'm sure there'd be a DNA test done by now and we would know it. Um, again, Tisha tells her mom that she's disrespecting her household. She says, for once I've really seen, oh, that's my note. For once I've really seen Tisha hold her mother accountable. Um, which I think is great for their relationship as well, because maybe Miss Wanda will back down a little bit when it comes to voicing her opinions on different things that's going on in Letitia's life. Marceau says, why is she here? Do you want to have a healthy and happy relationship and marriage? And I was like, oh, is Marceau joking? I hope he was joking, because Marceau could say some stuff like that and he'd be joking. But I, then again, I'm like, was he serious? Um, so... I just, I don't know. I worry about their marriage sometimes and hope it doesn't become a part of the reality TV curse that we know of. We know when couples go on reality TV, the marriages don't always work out and um, their marriages fall apart. But let's, I don't want to put that into the air. Maybe not. Let me know what you think about this episode. We get a sneak peek of next week's episode and we're going to Las Vegas for a cash trip. So I'm so excited. Woohoo. We don't get to see them go on many cash trips. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this video. Was Miss Wanda out of line? Do you agree with Melody and Tisha regarding Miss Wanda? What do you think about Martell having a baby and the whole Ariane stuff? Do you think he loves her? Did he have a DNA test? Comment all your thoughts here below and let me know what reality shows that you want me to review. Some of our shows are coming to an end or have come to an end, so I need some new shows to review. Comment below. Make sure they're reality shows, please. Comment reality shows below that you want me to review. I'll try to check it out. Come back here with all the juicy information and my opinion, of course. Love y'all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Damien After Dark. Mwah.